Today marks another day in history for the city of Peekskill, and it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this moment. I've been given the opportunity to welcome our New York State Governor, Andrew Cuomo, to swear in Pete Harcum as our New York State Senator, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Governor Cuomo, who was recently inaugurated for his third term, <laughs> is a great friend of mine, a great friend of Peekskill, and certainly a champion for Westchester. As a Westchester resident himself, he understands the challenges that we face, and he is working with us to build a better, safer future for all. From rebuilding our infrastructure, to fighting for our progressive ideals, to taking action to lower taxes, he's delivered for the region and for the entire state of New York. And especially now, with the support of new leaders like Senator Harcum, I can't wait to see what more I will, we will achieve, he will achieve this next term. So it is my honor and great pleasure to, in, to introduce him today. So I ask that you all join me the peak skill way. And let's welcome the 56th governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. How exciting is today? Let's give a big, big round of applause to Peter Harcum, the man of the day. To uh, Mayor Rainey, who's doing a great job he, here. He is a rising star. It's a pleasure to be with him. To the rabbi and the imam, thank you for those beautiful words of inspiration. Thank you. The uh, Peekskill City Singers, they were unbelievable, weren't they? Let's give them a round of applause. The Girl Scouts did a great job. Let's give them a round of applause. I have on my official itinerary, just so you know that, the mayor was supposed to start the Pledge of Allegiance, so I don't want to, I don't want to say anything. But give the Girl Scouts another round of applause for. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> the uh, you ha they were introduced, but uh, Senator Harcum is joining a great team of legislators uh, in Albany, and that's what it takes. It takes a team. And we have Shelley Mayer, let's give another round of applause. And David Buckwald, and Steve Otis, and Sandy Gallup, and Kevin Byrne. I am excited about what they're going to do together. Uh, I am a Mount Kisco resident, so if you don't mind a little piece of business, we have the County Executive George Latimer here and Mayor Percentage. I have a puddle at the end of my block. <laughs> no. Mount Kisco says it's the county. The county says it's Mount Kisco. I had to wear boots to get out of my house today, George. Boots. I pay my taxes, please. <laughs> yeah, it's not a state road. No, see? It is not. If it was a state road, it would be fixed by now. <laughs> Let's give George Latimer, Mayor Pacino, to all the local officials a round of applause. When I uh, was first chatting with Peter about making this run, uh, he said something very smart. And it said to me that he really knows what it's about. He said he had to check with his family. And uh, I know what that meant. Uh, Peter was experienced, he'd been in public service. Public service is a family sacrifice. Uh, and trust me, I know from my father and from my experience. Uh, it is a family decision and a family sacrifice because yes, Peter Harkin will be the senator, but that means he's out at night, he's out on weekends, it means he's not around uh, to do the things that other fathers would do and other partners would do. 
So it really is a sacrifice that the entire family makes, and it's something I respect. And let's acknowledge Emma and Kate, his daughters, and Jared and Finley, and Jin He Stevens, his partner, and Janet Harkum and Palmer Harkum. Thank you. Thank you for the contribution that you all are making. My father never asked me if I cared if he ran for governor or not. It was a different generation. He just said, put the posters on the polls and don't talk back. I am excited for the 40th district. Uh, they are getting one heck of a public servant. Uh, Peter Harkum is the full package. He has done everything. He served as a county legislature. He knows the not-for-profit world and housing with a home. I had the pleasure of working with him in the state government where he worked in the state housing department. He worked on the new Tappan Zee Bridge. I know Peter is Superman. He did not build the bridge all by himself. He did build the right side of the bridge all by himself, but he had left uh, help on the left. And let's give him a round of applause for that bridge, which was a great, great piece of work. He is not only going to be a great senator for the 40th district. He is going to be a great leader in the Senate. Because leadership is a function of head and heart. And Peter really is that combination. He knows the job. He knows it from every aspect. But he has a heart as big as the state of New York. He's doing this for all the right reasons. Uh, he did it with courage. This was not an easy race. This was not a, a, an easy journey. And he really stepped up because he believes. And I am confident that in two years, when he comes back to the people of the 40th District, he will be able to say that the state of New York has done more for the 40th District than it has ever done in the history of the state of New York, period. We understand the needs. He understands the needs. We have to help the middle class families. We have to get taxes down. We have to cap our property taxes, which are out of sight and are oppressing homeowners uh, all throughout the Hudson Valley. Uh, we'll do more economic development in the Hudson Valley than ever before, more middle class jobs created than ever before. Uh, and we're going to get to the essence of the most crucial issue this state and this nation is facing. And the rabbi touched on this and the mayor touched on this. I did my swearing in at Ellis Island. And people said, well, why would you do it at Ellis Island? Which, first of all, is technically in New Jersey. So it was a little unorthodox. <laughs> the, I said, I want to do it in Ellis Island because we're dealing with fundamental issues in this country right now. And sometimes you have to stay, take a step back and remember where we came from. With this federal government, we are seeing a spreading cancer in this nation, and the cancer is the division among us. They have used... They have used divide and conquer, which is not a new strategy or a novel strategy. As a matter of fact, it's an old and it's an ugly strategy. But that's the strategy they use to win politically. And that's the strategy they've been using governmentally. And it is poison for this nation. Ellis Island, because we are all from someplace else. We are all immigrants. <laughs> We are all different. And when you try to demonize our differences, you tear the fabric that is this nation. The nation exists. The state exists. Because we say we understand we're diverse. We understand we're from different places. 
and we accept it and we consider it a strength and the commonality is the values that we all hold dear. That's what made America, America, and New York knows that better than anyone else because we were the laboratory for that American experiment of democracy. There is no place that has more diversity and more differences and more density. 19 million people in one state from every land on the globe, all accepting each other and not judging on color of skin or sexual orientation or race. We are New Yorkers and we <laughs> respond that way. And this legislature is going to stand up and fill that void and the vacuum that this federal government is creating. Let them try to divide us. Let them try to divide us by religion and by race. We're going to say the exact opposite in this legislative session. We are one, we are united, we respect each other's rights. We're going to stand up for women's rights who have been disrespected by this federal administration. We're going to stand up for the rights of the LGBTQ community, which has been disrespected by this administration. And we're going to set a tone of unity rather than division. New York has always led the way, always. You look back in the history books, whenever this nation was at a crossroads, whenever there was a tension and they were figuring out the way forward, New York was always there as a shining beacon and we will be once again pointing the way forward. And Peter Harcum is going to be in the middle of that crusade and leading that crusade, and it's my honor to swear in Senator Peter Harcum at this time. <laughs> will a family join us, please? Positioning is very important here, otherwise <laughs> it, it does not work if you are in the wrong position. Yeah. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't count. Right hand on the Bible, raise your left hand please. Can you come a little closer please? One of my daughters messed up positioning, I'm not from the governor now. <laughs> please repeat after me. I, state your name. I, Peter Harkham. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office of State Senator of New York. Of State Senator of New York. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you all for coming. First, I, I want to thank a few people before I, I start my remarks. Um, certainly, we want to thank Governor Cuomo. Uh, I've known the governor. Yes, please. I've known the governor nearly 20 years. Uh, he's always been a champion of New York as uh, Secretary of HUD, as Attorney General, and now entering his third term as governor. You remember when he took office, this state was in the grips of the Great Recession. 
Uh, we now have more private sector jobs in the history of New York State, thanks to his <laughs> efforts. First state to ban fracking. First state with $15 minimum wage. Paid family leave, free college tuition for middle class New Yorkers. It's, it's an impressive record and I, I look forward to working with the governor in my new capacity. Mayor Rainey, thank you. What a welcome to Peekskill. Thank you so much. My good friend and your good friend, County Executive George Latimer, thank you. And to all of you in the clergy, thank you for your, your wonderful words. Thank you. And the Girl Scouts and the Color Guard, please. Now, I, I thought the Peekskill City Singers were so good that I wouldn't even have to speak. We'll just bring them out for a couple more songs. Let's hear it for them. And Dr. Uh, David Mauricio, the superintendent of the Peekskill Schools, along with the principal, the school board, the PTO, and everybody who worked so hard on today's event, and certainly thank my team as well. Thank you. I want to recognize and thank Senator Andrea Stewart-Cousins, who will be my leader as the first woman to lead the New York State Senate. And of course, uh, my new colleagues, colleagues for me, but certainly people who I've known a long time, the great state delegation who are here today. And I want to thank you for all of your help that you've given me during this transition, and I can't wait to get to work with you. Thank you all very much. And I want to thank all of our local partners in government who are here. I noticed that uh, Pound Ridge Supervisor Kevin Hansen is here, uh, North Salem Supervisor Warren Lucas uh, we saw come in, and all of the uh, local partners in government, thank you. I look forward to working with you. Uh, Putnam County Executive Mary Ellen O'Dell, who could not be here, who's been very, very helpful with the transition on Putnam issues and an office in Carmel, we thank her. And finally, I want to thank um, Senator Terrence Murphy for all of his service. We wish him and his family all the best. And to all of you, I say thank you for being here. And for those of you who are celebrating, happy Three Kings Day. Thank you. Now, somebody once said, if, if you want to make God laugh, have a plan. And, and that's kind of, uh, kind of what happened here. You know, I, I wrote down some thoughts yesterday, and, and people who know me and work with me know I, I rarely s speak from notes or from a speech, but I figured, well, the campaign has shifted. Let me put down a couple of thoughts. And then the theme has completely changed, and, and I appreciate that. And, and I was really struck by all of the remarks because three of my four grandparents were foreign-born. They came here at a time when immigrants were not welcome. They had nothing, and they worked hard. One worked as a seamstress in the garden, garment district. Another was a, an engineer on a fireboat. Uh, and my other grandfather was a porter in the buildings of New York, stoking coal, cleaning out uh, spittoons and slop sinks. Um, it was dirty, and it was hard work. And from that came the beginning of the Service Employees Union, working hard, but standing up and fighting back. And, and so like you, Rabbi, I, I feel as though I have not earned my citizenship either. I, I feel as though I was born into it. But public service is a way of earning that citizenship, of giving back, whether it's on a library board, a school board, a town board, uh, whatever it is that you can do, we need to do. We need good people at, at this time and at this place because our, our nation is being torn apart 
uh, by hatred, by ideology, uh, and that's why we're here in Peekskill today, um, because we embrace the diversity of Peekskill. That's why we're going to be putting our office here, because we want to be as accessible to everybody as we possibly can be. And we recognize that our diversity is our greatest strength. But those of us who govern and have been given the opportunity to govern need to govern humbly. You know, that I, I, I can't remember when trash talking started passing for governing and legislation. But we need to start changing the tone, and that will start today. So we have so much to do. We talked a lot during the campaign about many of the progressive issues that had been stalled in the Senate, uh, reproductive health care, the Red Flag Bill, the Child Victims Act. All of those are going to be moving very, very quickly, uh, working with Senator Andrea Stewart-Cousins and working with the governor and his team. Those are going to be moving very quickly. Common sense gun safety, election reform. And for the first time in a long time, a real conversation about universal health care in New York State. But we have a lot of local issues that we need to deal with. And first and foremost, to my local colleagues in government, it doesn't matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or what the makeup of your towns are, I work for you. And I cannot be successful unless all of you are successful. So it's not about me imposing some vision on your municipality. It's me being a support service to you and what you're trying to accomplish with the people of your municipality. You know, we have 1,200 families who live in uncertainty about the closure of Indian Point and what that is going to do to their uh, their school district and their municipality. And we will focus like on, on a laser on economic redevelopment and what we can do to save those jobs by requiring Entergy to hire them during the decommissioning of the plant. <laughs> Climate change. I, I don't know if I'd scream for that. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I get it. You know, this, this is a seri such a serious threat. I remember a few years ago when we talked about climate change, it was like, wow, this could really impact our grandkids. And then it shifted a few years ago to, wow, this is really going to impact our kids. And then two new studies came out and it was like, holy cow, we've got 12 years or this is going to be impacting us. So everything we do has to be focused on how do we get away from a fossil fuel economy and onto a clean, renewable energy economy here in New York State. And finally, many families in this district and many families throughout New York State um, have lost people due to the opioid crisis. Uh, they've either lost their lives or they've lost their way, um, and, and this is a real tragedy, that more people in this country died of opioid overdose than at the height of the AIDS ep epidemic. So as the chair of alcoholism and substance abuse, this will be a top priority for me, not just in the Hudson Valley, but throughout New York State. We've got to get people the health coverage that they need so they can get the long-term treatment and treat the co-occurring disorders that often send people back for relapse after relapse. And I make that pledge to you that that will be our focus. And yet with all those challenges, I'm very hopeful. You know, we've got great leadership. Andrea Stewart-Cousins, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Um, we've got a great delegation here, county executive, George Latimer, Mayor Andre Rainey, all of the great elected officials here. You know, that if we all remember what team we play for, it's not the Democratic team, the Republican team, the legislative team, the executive branch team, 
We're all the New York team. And if we approach this with humility and remember who it is that we work for and where it is that we come from, we're going to get some amazing things accomplished. Thank you all. God bless you. Thanks for coming. One more time for Pete Harkum, ladies and gentlemen. Senator Pete Harkum.